Yo, so guys, so this morning we're diving here at Kipal. Plan is to go to the drop off, brought some chum, and hopefully some onos or pelagics come in. I still am on the hunt for an ono, but water's looking freaking good. Check it out. Look at that. Flat. So yeah, today we got me, Alan, and Big B. Okay. So, should be fun. Ah, Gonna get suited up and then see you in the water. Shoots. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Shoots. Just jokes. Forgot my freaking weight belt. <laughs> so, now I gotta hurry back. And, uh, all right, crap. Don't you guys hate it when you forget stuff? Uh, also, let me know in the comments, guys, if those of you that forgot stuff for diving or whatever, hunting, have you actually gone back and drove back home and grabbed your stuff or whatever let me know in the comments guys see you in the water so this was my first drop of the day and because i haven't been diving too often i took this drop to gauge my breath hold and to see how my breath hold would be for this day So I made my way to the drop off and here this is the first drop on the drop off creeping to the ledge and just looking around hoping that an uku or yellow spot something to make sashimi is nearby. As I'm looking around, I notice off in the distance to my lower right, there's a bunch of moose coming in. But I'm not paying too much attention to them because I don't think they're gonna give me a shot. Here they're slowly coming in and I'm starting to think about these moose more and more and so I get ready, point in their direction. This one's just about in range, but my barb doesn't open, so I lose this one. So immediately after I lost that move, two good sized ukus came in and here I'm chumming, hoping that it attracts the ukus to come back. After I was done chumming and did my breathe up, I took another drop. Here I look up, looking at the chum coming down. And I'm just looking around to see where the ukus are at. Right now I can't see any of the ukus so I'm just looking around because I don't know where they're gonna pop up if they show up. <laughs> right there that uku pops up and I start grunting and do the flashing technique but it just goes straight off to the deep. So here I'm creeping up to the ledge again and I know the ukus are around. So I'm just hoping that I can get the ukus to come up to the ledge and present me with a decent shot. <laughs> So the ukus don't quite come in, but I'm looking at these ta'apes and then I look to the right, I see these moves coming in, so try to move slowly, line up on this move, and I get a good holding shot on this one. So 
So not only did I forget my weight belt, but I also forgot my gloves. And I didn't check my dive bag before going back up for my weight belt to see if I had my gloves. So because I didn't have my glove on my left hand, as I was subduing this move, I ended up cutting up my hand a lot on the gill plate of this move. So literally right below my float as I strung up my move, this taco was below me. So I took a drop here, but after taking him out, I noticed he was pretty small, like a pound. So I ended up letting this one go. After that, I went right back to where I saw the ukus and took another drop. Try to dive a little bit deeper to the lower ledge. The ukus don't really come in, but these two small Moana collies come in, and I thought that was pretty cool. It's always nice to see prize fish in heavily fished areas, so I'm hoping this one grows a lot bigger. drop off we decided to move off to a different spot and on the way there I found some moo in this channel so took a drop and dusted and gonna close my eyes and put my head down now oftentimes when I close my eyes and put my head down like this especially waiting for moves I like to daydream about something to kind of lose track of time Here I look up and I see some of the moose slowly coming in but not in range. There's a few moose coming close but they're on the smaller side. There's one really good size one but he's still far off. So my dive partner told me that while I was lying here, an Uku snuck up behind me. So I took this drop, faced the opposite way, and I'm waiting to see that head pop up. Here he shows up right off in the distance, so let out a few grunts, do a little sanding. And right here he pops up again, and he'll eventually give me a pretty decent shot. Can I borrow your left hand glove? <laughs> I cut up my hand on the boo earlier. Oh yeah. Uh, well, I forgot wow. my gloves too. <laughs> Thanks. Huh? <laughs> You're welcome. I can give you a stab. <laughs> huh? So as you saw, my dive partner was nice enough to let me borrow his glove just to subdue my move. Now my hand was throbbing from that move earlier so I didn't want to cut my hand up more than it already was so I really appreciated that. Normally, whenever I know I want to cook up a fish that night or prep it that night, I like to clean the fish in the ocean. It saves me the trouble of cleaning it when I get home. 
But since this one, I'm gonna turn it to sashimi. I only scale it. I'm not gonna gut it. So after this, the action pretty much slowed down, and we decided to head back in and call it a dive. Well, that's that. Uh, it turned out from an epic fail day for getting my weight belt to an epic dive day. So, not the biggest, but got me some sashimi and some steamer. So, tonight, um, probably turn this into sashimi and then that one probably, I don't know, my wife will turn into ankake mu or something. So, today we're making ankake mu. And originally we were supposed to fry up the whole fish, but the moo doesn't quite fit in the pan. And I don't have a wok. So now I have to fillet the moo and then we're gonna turn it into bite-sized bits basically. So it's time to fillet the moo and then Go from there. So how I usually fillet my fish is I usually start from here, make an incision along the spine, not too deep, maybe that deep in, and just puncture the skin basically, come down to the tail, and then start this side coming here. And then I flip the fish, do the same thing before I actually cut all the way down to the center bone. So I know what you guys are thinking that I don't have to gut the fish to when I fillet it but like I said earlier I, my original plan was to fry the whole fish but it doesn't fit in the pan and I don't have a wok so plan B fillet it and then cut it into bite-sized bits. Alright so I got the bite-sized pieces right here it's gonna be fried up for the ankake and then here is the fillet or the rest of the fish. So. Uh, Usually we save the center bone for miso soup, but we might try some other type of soup with the whole remaining fish. I left the collar and the belly on the carcass so that we still have a lot of meat when we decide to make the soup with this. Alright, so we have our chopped up carrots, string beans, onions, chili pepper, garlic, and we still have to chop up these green onions and all of this is gonna go in the onkake sauce that goes over the fried moo. So first we're frying up some of the garlic and then adding the onions. And we're just gonna let it brown in the pan for a couple minutes. And now we're adding the carrots. As well as the string beans, we're gonna let that simmer in the pan for a little bit. Okay, so for the onkake sauce, we will be using ketchup, white vinegar, shoyu, this is made by Yamas, uh, cane sugar, cornstarch, and salt. Also, a missing ingredient that we don't have but we would normally incorporate into this recipe would be mirin. So if you have mirin, also add that as well. So 
So here we're starting off with the white vinegar. We used approximately three tablespoons. So next we added the shoyu. And then after the shoyu, we added the white sugar. At this point, our box was not cooperating with us, so we abandoned the tablespoon and just eyeballed it. Next, we're gonna add our ketchup. Then we're gonna add our salt. So here we have our fish boiling in hot water. Normally before you throw the fish inside of the boiling water that you're gonna use for the soup, you normally rinse it off with boiling hot water from a kettle or something. And what that does is it cleans the fish of all the blood that's stuck inside of the center bone and all the veins and whatnot. Since we didn't do that, now we have to scoop up all the dirty water, which is basically the blood escaping from the moo, and clean it out of the soup since this will be our actual soup base. So here we're just mixing up some potato starch and flour and this will be the breading for the fried portion of our moo. Okay, so now we're going to add Hawaiian salt to the moo soup. So here we're going to add shoyu to the soup base. Now we flour the blue pieces and then we fry it up. So now we're going to add the eggs into the blue soup as the finishing touch. Finally, top it off with the chives and green onions. And to top off the dish, make it complete, we're smothering it with the ankake sauce over the fried moo bits. And this is our ankake moo dish. Yeah. <laughs> 